Hi and welcome to yet another one of these movies. Here I want to just show you some quite simple things. First what I want to do is I want to make a play which will play a note rather short. Please, so I'm going to go sustain 0 and a release of 0 0.2. So that will just give me a very quick envelope. Okay, attack is by default 0 but I do like to put it in so I can see it's there. I'm not worrying about the K. Okay, so we'll just play something quite quickly back. Let's get notes and let's make it a ring. It's a little scale there. It's a hexaphonic scale. Uh, <laughs> let's make it a normal scale. So I can play back those notes and they'll all go back at once. Like that. So there are various ways I could play through these notes one by one. Um, I'm not going to use a live loop and tick because I want to stay away from that. So I'm going to just do at the moment one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven dot times two, sleep, zero point two five, and not very interesting. I want the notes to play one by one. One way in which I could do this is by extracting the variable which says how many times I've looped through. Okay, and when I play notes, I'm going to not just play back any of the notes, but select one of them. I'll put a print. So just tell me what these variables are and particularly which node I'm extracting from the loop. I'm going to print at the top so I can see what that is. So let's run this. Okay, turn my half off, I don't need that. It was actually on something quite contextually important though. It's on the rings section. So the notes of the rings. Loops equals 0, notes loops equals 60, it's choosing the first one. Loops equals 1, choosing 62, and it's doing the right number of goes through that loop. Okay, well, how did I know that 7 was the right number? I counted the 7, and that gave me the right number there. I can actually do this. This will actually tell me how long my ring buffer or other thing is. We scroll up here, we see quickly oh, we see quickly that notes dot length equals seven. If I take one of my notes out, okay, because it was a ring, the very last one, because I now looped one too many times, went back to the start again. Can we hear that? We go all the way up and go back to the start again. Okay, if I want to, this notes dot length tells me how many things I've got. Let's go up and we see it says now six because I changed the number. If I go notes dot length dot times, then this will actually repeat the right number of times. Let's take that one out. And let's add two more. Let's add three more. Okay, not so musical anymore. Right, I just want to point out that these are the kind of things we do if we use the sort of the basic built on things like notes dot length and array access as well. With languages such as Raspberry Pi, they're designed to be easy to use. And quite frequently, you'll find multiple ways of doing things because some ways of doing things are going to be more easier to use give you shorter code to actually make them happen and that therefore helps you in live coding performance. Let's simplify this down by taking out the print statements and now I'm going to use a different loop. Note dot each do and this is going to extract not the position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 but the actual note. So if I put notes dot each do I'm going to put a variable there to store what gets taken out of the ring buffer and that's going to be the note. Then I just play the note
And that's my point for this. In this case, the notes.length.times do extract the index, the i, then extract something from the ring buffer using the array method of accessing one number inside something, all of which wasn't actually necessary to do what I wanted to do. If I use the dot each loops, then it just, it's easy. It extracts the notes one by one, which is what I want. And I can play them. The code is simple. It's easy to read. I type less, so it's less likely for me to make errors. And we're finished. So thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see you in the next movie.